was Paris in the spring, and there was hope in the air. The eyes of the world were focused on the Palace of Versailles. The business at hand was the treaty to end World War I. They decided it must never happen again. The United States, said President Wilson, would aid in the establishment of just democracy throughout the world. The sins of the men and women who marched out from Paris in anger to grab Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette now are to hail a 20th century peacemaker. The Big Four, Clemenceau of France. Lloyd George of England. Wilson of the United States the Puritan schoolmaster with his vision of tomorrow that has nothing to do with reparations and revenge desired by the old world diplomats. This man is an idealist who truly believes that to promote international cooperation and achieve international peace and security, he must guarantee the world remains safe for democracy. For Wilson, the heart of the peace treaty is in the covenant of the League of Nations, the covenant that would abolish war and settle disputes by law and reason. Through six long months of debate and intrigue and compromise, Woodrow Wilson has held stubbornly to his dream, and the covenant has been written into the treaty. But Versailles is only a beginning. To present his far-sighted 14 points, Woodrow Wilson sailed for Paris. The Big Four, Lloyd George, Clemenceau, Orlando, and Woodrow Wilson discuss the fate of their fallen foes. But at the signing of the treaty at Versailles, Woodrow Wilson failed to achieve his dream for lasting peace. He returned... Wilson, the United States was also thrust into the moral leadership of the world. For Wilson had promised that this would be a war to end wars, a war to make safe for democracy. He himself, with a large staff, sailed for France for the peace conference at Versailles to try to make good these promises. Wilson arrived in France in December 1918. There he was besieged by the people whose hearts he had stirred. There is a great tide running in the hearts of men. The hearts of men have never beaten so singularly in unison before. Men have never been so conscious of their brotherhood. Before the peace conference, Wilson visited England and Italy. Everywhere he was hailed by vast crowds. He and the democracy of which he was president had become a symbol of hope to Europe's people. A groundswell rose among the people of the world as the leaders of the great powers gathered at Versailles for the peace conference. With his capacity to interpret the aspirations of people throughout the world, Wilson was the acknowledged leader of this conference. It's working. The main responsibility for setting the terms of the peace was borne by the Council of Four. Here, next to Wilson, stands Clemenceau. Beside him is Orlando of Italy, and next to him the British war leader David Lloyd George. These three men had spent their lives dealing with the kinds of pressures and interests that had brought on the war, and they were not ready to accept the views of Woodrow Wilson, president of a nation with no territorial ambition. We are here to see that the very foundations of this war are swept away. Those foundations were the private choice of a small coterie of civil rulers and military staffs. The aggression of great powers.